What is up guys, thanks for stopping by Steady Chaos Productions, I'm your man Steady Chaos. And so tonight I just kind of want to vent to the community, I kind of want to vent to my subscribers and non-subscribers that come across this channel. And I just want to tell you guys that at this point, I never thought I'd say this, but I've kind of had it with Naughty Dog. So, the last year has been incredibly trying for Naughty Dog. Now, I am one of these people that has stood by them through their debacle of a launch with The Last of Us Part 2. The Last of Us Part 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. The Uncharted series is great. They are an excellent developer. They're probably, I don't know if they still are, but certainly through the 2010 to 2019 period, or 2000 to 2019 period, one of Sony's best first party studios, if not their best studio. I think the reputation a little bit and maybe some of their storytelling acumen and abilities in games has taken a bit of a hit with The Last of Us Part Two. It really has been a complete string of, and pardon my French here, if any kids are watching this, this is intended for adults, but it's been a string of fuck ups for Naughty Dog for the last 12 months, I'd say. and. As somebody, like I said, who has supported them through thick and thin and really was defending The Last of Us Part Two amidst all the leaks, all the controversy, after having played the game twice, uh, I really did enjoy The Last of Us Part Two. It's, there's no question that it's a great game. Say what you want about the story, uh, but the gameplay itself, the characters and how they're fleshed out, uh, the environmental interaction, everything about it, the tone and tenor, the polish, the dialogue, it's all top-notch AAA stuff. But it's not just The Last of Us Part Two. it's leading up to The Last of Us Part Two. It's Naughty Dog's PR that has been driving me crazy. It's just the leaks, the delays, the ripping out multiplayer at the last second, just giving us a quick little Twitter announcement over a year ago now and not giving us any updates since. It's just, it's that lack of transparency. It's all the copyright strikes on people's YouTube channels. It's all of these things mixed together. It's the, the story about Naughty Dog's ridiculous uh, work environment, how they expect their employees to work 16, 17, 18 hours a day and work just endless amounts of overtime, just ridiculous amounts of crunch. It's all of this that's come to a head, I feel like, the last year. And I'm just starting to get sick of Naughty Dog's crap. Um, that's, that's just how I feel. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna play their games in the future. Of course they have great games, but I'm just, I'm just starting to get tired. So let's just go through as quick as I can, point by point, by what's really making me annoyed with Naughty Dog here. You know, you guys might not agree with this. Some of you may. It's fine if we don't agree. It's okay. I'm just, like I said, I'm venting. Everybody has their own opinions. Everybody has their point of view. That's all. So don't feel the need to freak out in the comment section. If you want to have a spirited back and forth, that's totally fine. But I'm just kind of venting to you guys. So the first thing is, why was The Last of Us 2 delayed so many times? The game, my God, the game was in development for about six years and it was delayed internally multiple times. It was delayed officially multiple times and there wasn't always the best transparency there. It was delayed because of coronavirus at the last moment. It was delayed prior to coronavirus. This article just goes into great length explaining why it was delayed so many times. Obviously COVID-19, like I said, um, but then the quality control, you know, yes, Naughty Dog has a rich and illustrious history of game development with, you know, Uncharted 4, Uncharted of Thieves, and the Uncharted series, The Last of Us Part 1. They, they have that storytelling and graphical ability that they're known for at this point, and they probably feel like they have to live up to that to some degree. But my God, you can't have six and seven year development cycles for every single game. It's dragging on year after year after year. I'm just not sure how sustainable it is to have constant delays it just took forever for us to get the game and that that's not in and of itself that one thing us having to wait through multiple delays that's not a huge deal and that's not a reason in and of itself why i've started to turn on naughty dog but it's one of the reasons uh and then we move on to just the debacle that was the launch of the last of us part two probably because the game was delayed so many times because there was so much difficulty in development, because so many employees had to make so many sacrifices with their personal lives and families. That's precisely why the game was probably leaked prior to launch um, as sort of a F you to Naughty Dog by some of its employees or testers, what have you. Whoever leaked it, they had a copy of the game and they certainly leaked it for a reason. They didn't agree with the storyline, they didn't agree with Naughty Dog's you know, delays in pursuit of perfection at all costs. 
So that was another mess. Even despite all of these things, the delays, the, the horrible leaks, which ruined the entire storyline of the game, really, for millions of people. Despite that, again, that's not in and of itself reason enough for me to start hating on Naughty Dog, but there's more, there's more to the story. When these leaks came out, when they surfaced, needless to say, it was all over Reddit, it was all over YouTube, it was all over uh, Instagram, it was, everybody was talking about it, it was all over Facebook, all these social media sites. And you're not gonna be able to stop that. It's Naughty Dog that either created a disgruntled employee or gave somebody a copy of the game that they clearly couldn't trust. It's Naughty Dog's fault for not vetting and protecting this process of release of this uber important game and Sony too to some degree. It's not YouTubers fault for simply talking about what they saw in these leaks or talking about the overarching storyline that was spoiled by these leaks. A lot of these YouTubers like I show here, uh, you know, this person says most of these videos aren't showing any footage, any leaked footage of The Last of Us Part 2 prior to its release. They just talked about the game yet they were getting copyright strikes time and time again. And despite that, I still defended Naughty Dog back in May and early June. Uh, I, I gave, you know, YouTubers like The Quartering, I gave them a really hard time about ripping on Naughty Dog. I'm like, you know, this is this is leaked material. And this is copyright material, you know. They, they Naughty Dog should be copyright striking these people. This stuff is, is copyrighted under law. It's, you know, it hasn't been launched or released yet. This shouldn't be out in the general public, but really going aggressively after the little guy on YouTube who's just talking about leaks, not even showing them. Uh, that's kind of, ugh. But even so, I still stuck with Naughty Dog. And then we move on to right before release, a few months prior to release, uh, we get the statement on Twitter from Naughty Dog. We wanted to address multiplayer in The Last of Us Part Two, as we've stated, the single player campaign is for yada yada yada, making excuses, we're putting so much time and effort into single player, which I'm sure they were, clearly they were, people working 16 hour days. So they basically said, we don't have enough time to put factions in, despite the fact that we promised it since 2014, basic. Well, we promised it for years, since 2017 or 18. Yes, Factions will be in there. Factions is incredibly popular in The Last of Us Part 1 and The Last of Us Remastered on the PlayStation 4. Yes, yes, you're going to get Factions. And then, however, you will eventually experience the fruits of our team's online ambition, but not as part of The Last of Us Part 2. So everyone's expecting Factions were months from release and Naughty Dog just goes, lops it right off. Bam, gone. When and where it will be realized is still to be determined. But rest assured, we are as big a fan of factions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready. What does that even mean? It's such an open-ended statement. It's basically just saying no factions. We have no idea when there will be a factions. And it's probably, it could very well be um, a game that is similar to factions, but isn't exactly in the Last of Us Part Two universe. Or maybe it is in the Last of Us Part Two universe. Maybe it's gonna be a standalone release. Maybe they're waiting for PlayStation 5. Maybe they're gonna patch it for PlayStation 4. Who knows? Maybe if Naughty Dog's PR is a little bit more transparent, we have some idea what's happening with factions. But but alas, we have no idea. So this is when I started to really, really get annoyed. When you factor in these first four things, it just starts taking a toll. But again, still loyal to Naughty Dog, we move on to the next thing. Outbreak Day. Every year since The Last of Us has released on the PlayStation 3, the original, in 2013, they've had what's called an Outbreak Day, which is in late September, where they celebrate all things The Last of Us, The Last of Us Universe, huge uh, developments in games, uh, The Last of Us Part Two, you know, gameplay footage, releases, updates, things like that. We're in September of 2020 now. The game launched The Last of Us Part Two in June of 2020. It's been three plus months. Everybody is expecting and wanting like feverishly some update on factions because it's been, like I said, from Naughty Dog's PR, radio silence. So here is Naughty Dog hyping up um, The Last of Us Part 2 Outbreak Day or The Last of Us Outbreak Day. And oh, we've got some big announcements and awesome stuff to show with you guys. We can't wait for Outbreak Day. Outbreak Day comes and what do we get? We get Joel and Ellie action figures. Joel and Ellie action figures. Really? Really, Naughty Dog. You look at the comment section on these posts from Naughty Dog and all anyone's asking about is factions. Of course, you have the occasional 
The Last of Us and Naughty Dog Apologist. Uh, they're out there. It was once me, not anymore. Uh, but yeah, we get action figures. And then they go on, they talk about, oh look, Last of Us, um, Outbreak Day, Day 2, more action figures. They're not even action figures, they're like freaking dolls on a stand that you can put in your furniture. Who the hell's gonna buy The Last of Us dolls? I guess if you have a dedicated man cave, then your wife would let you get away with something like that, but pff, it's just... And then they have The Last of Us, on Outbreak Day they have, in addition to these dolls and action figures, they have cosplay photos, whatever, that's fine i guess people want to cosplay and naughty dog want to show it off they have posters to tape on your wall like i mean that's fine on any other ordinary day but this is outbreak day you touted it as having big news you were excited uh to make some announcements and you have dolls i mean it's just i feel like i'm being trolled here like this is ridiculous and then we fast forward to so this was september 26th right around there outbreak day we fast forward now, it's October, what, like 17th or 18th? We're almost a month later. Still crickets on factions. We haven't heard anything really official and no announcements from Naughty Dog. God knows what they're working on right now. Are they even working on factions? Like I said, are they incorporating it to another game? Are they working on another game? I don't even, who knows? Nobody knows what the hell's going on over there. So we move forward to today and what's Naughty Dog's announcement today? This should be good. Join John Sweeney and Eric Pangolian, art directors, as they discuss the direction on The Last of Us Part Two at View Conference 2020. So View Conference 2020, we have Naughty Dog all excited and announcing that they're gonna discuss the art direction from the single player campaign, The Last of Us Part Two. I, get, I can't get too worked up, but this is again, this is any ordinary day. So if they wanna, re they wanna release these things or have these updates about the game on their Twitter feed, so be it. But again, <laughs> The game has been out for over four months. Everybody and their mother that's wanted to play the sequel has already played the sequel multiple times. Again, there's been no official update on factions. We're getting more stuff like this. More stuff like, let's talk about art design. Art direction from a game that everyone's already played and nobody really cares about anymore. The only way you're gonna give The Last of Us Part Two legs to carry it through the next several years and into the PlayStation 5 ecosystem is to give it a factions mode. That's what's gonna bring people back to the game. That's what's gonna grow your player base. Otherwise, once people beat the game in single player and then maybe they play it on Grounded or Survivor after, they beat it one or two times, they're done. They're not going back to the game ever for any reason. There's no point. Maybe two or three years later when they've forgotten about it, they might go back and do a quick playthrough. But <laughs> the only reason the first Last of Us and The Last of Us Remastered got as many sales as it did, roughly 25 million plus at this point, which is astronomical, is primarily because it's replayability factor. There is that factions attached to this legendary single player campaign. And most people have agreed The Last of Us Part Two is a great game, but the campaign is not on the same level as The Last of Us Part One. It's not quite as legendary. It's not quite, as, it doesn't have that magic associated with it like the first one did. So you factor that lack of magic, if you will, in part two in with the fact that it has no factions and there's no announcements about factions coming at any point, anytime soon, then you just had people like me who have been longtime Naughty Dog loyalists and apologists get tired. Well, I'm just tired, man. I just, just give us an update, something, anything. And they're just, I just feel like we're being trolled. Like Neil Druckmann and Sony and Naughty Dog, they know exactly what people want. Just a simple update is all that would be required and they're not giving it out. And that brings me to my last point, which I've already touched upon, um, the crunch culture that has also come out uh, or been exposed, if you were, at Naughty Dog. Uh, the last six to 12 months of The Last of Us Part Two's development cycle, we talked about this already quickly. I'll just touch on it again with this article. People were working 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hour days. Overtime was pretty much, it wasn't required, but it was expected and you felt guilty if you worked your regular eight hour or nine hour shift and then went home. Everyone kind of looked at you like, oh, well, the, this guy isn't making the requisite sacrifices we're all making. It's like, Jesus Christ. And you look at this, one major consequence of this culture has been attrition. Of the 20 non-lead designers in the credits of 2016's Uncharted 4, a whopping 14 to 70% are no longer at the studio, which has wide ranging effects on the development of The Last of Us too, and led to questions about the continued viability of the Naughty Dog approach. It's not sustainable at all. They are not gonna be able to 
continue to have this working environment and to have these expectations on developers. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch up with them in their next game because it already caught up with them in The Last of Us Part 2. That's part of the reason why it took them six years to finish the game because they kept losing animation artists, they kept losing visual design artists, all these people who were experienced who knew Naughty Dog systems and the Naughty Dog way, and they've had to replace them with other people, with outsiders, and it takes a period of time to train them, to get them acclimated, to get them to understand the expectations, which just further delays the process, which we already talked about, constant and utter delays of The Last of Us Part 2. God knows what the next, if it's The Last of Us Part 3, we might not get that game until 2029 at this point. It might be on the PlayStation 6. <laughs> and who knows, we, we won't know anyway. It'll be radio silence for the next five years. So whatever, I mean, part of me just feels like a naughty dog. I, I appreciate the perfectionism. I appreciate the fact that you want to get everything just right, but it's not sustainable. And part of me also feels like naughty dog has gotten a little bit too big for their own britches. Uh, tone it down a little bit, come back down to earth, be a little bit more transparent with your fan base who most of them still love and adore you. Uh, you've lost a few, uh, including me. I I'm not saying that I'm gone to Naughty Dog. I I'm not saying that I wouldn't anticipate or want to play The Last of Us Part 3 or Uncharted 5 or whatever else. Hopefully it's an entirely new game at this point. I'm just, uh, I'm just tired. I'm just tired, Neil. I'm just tired, so. I just had to vent. Um, again, if you don't agree with anything I just said, that's totally fine. These are just my opinions, these are just my observations, and I really just wanted to share them with my subscribers and anyone else who's watching this video. And by all means, please let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about Naughty Dog in the last year that it's had with the leaks, with the copyright strikes, with the constant delays of The Last of Us Part Two, with them haphazardly cutting out factions that everyone expected and was pretty much promised, with no transparency and no updates about when factions is coming, if ever. Um, how do you feel about all this? So please let me know in the comment section down below. And that is going to do it for my diatribe. I'm pretty much done here. At this point, I have a ton of dry mouth because I've been talking so fast and aggressively because I feel like I have so much to say about Naughty Dog and The Last of Us. It's been, um, it's been rough. And I, I think that the leaks and some of the stories about Naughty Dog's practices and the copyright strikes, I really do think in the end that that cost them some sales for The Last of Us Part Two, And there's probably a reason why, again, when it comes to sales, Sony and Naughty Dog aren't really being transparent. The last update we got was in mid-August saying that uh, Sony and Naughty Dog sold around four to five million copies of The Last of Us Part Two in the first couple of weeks. Since then, we've had no updates on the sales figures. And I feel as though there's probably a reason behind that because it's simply not selling as well as they expected. And if you, can out half the game or at least a third of the game i would say um in factions then that is to be expected and if you have these negative leaks and these negative stories and these copyright strikes and all that all that garbage surrounding and swirling around the last of us part two that's to be expected so i guess you to some degree you reap what you sow so anyway hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and thank you i appreciate you letting me vent and until next time guys we will see you later peace